This is Amy. She has a rare genetic disorder called cocaine syndrome. This year, Amy is getting married. I searched for many years to find out what, what the diagnosis was for Amy. Um, I used to go to the library in Liverpool and sit there flicking through books of anything to do with bones, growth, anything I could find and um, looking on the internet and it sort of became an obsession with me really to find out what was wrong with her. Age five I found cocaine syndrome on a website and when I um, pulled up a picture of children with it I just knew Amy had it from that moment on but trying to get the medical profession to, to agree that it was that was a different matter altogether. When Amy was 14 she had deteriorated quite a lot and um, here in the UK doctors were you know happy to just let that deterioration continue without um, looking into it further really and I wasn't happy with that so we set about raising money to try and uh, find somebody that would help Amy and um, we found a doctor over in Boston Children's Hospital in Massachusetts America and we raised the money to go and fly over and see him um, and she was diagnosed via a simple blood test three weeks after our trip to America. One in 56,000 people in the UK are thought to have cocaine syndrome. The genetic disorder can mainly be seen in children, causing them to age prematurely, ultimately leading to a shortened life expectancy. With cocaine syndrome, they, they, it brings on rapid ageing and, um, and with that you know, comes blindness, deafness, um, Parkinson's disease type symptoms, multiple cirrhosis type symptoms, um, you know the children suffer terribly um, and the, the longer the children actually live the more progressive neurological problems they get as well. It was a sense of relief ha having um, thought that it was cocaine syndrome from the age of five, ten years later to finally be in a room with people that you just knew it was the same it was a relief. Um, I rang England and spoke to my husband and said to him, I've got some brilliant news, Amy has got cocaine syndrome. And um, he's always been the optimistic one from the two of us. And he was devastated. It was the opposite effect for him. He said, you know what this means now, don't you? And I said, well, I've always known really what it meant. So, uh, but, it, but it was initially a relief to know, but uh, very quickly that turned from, you know, pure ecstasy of knowing to complete sadness of realising exactly what's coming next, you know. What sort of stuff uh, do you do to, to help Amy? Do you help her? Um, Johnny we, carries her. Yeah, I carry her to the bus and to the car and things and carry her um, into Miss Card. I get a breakfast and bring a tea into the room, and I make I mean then make her teas and coffees when she likes it. Yeah. When we went over um, to visit the doctor in America, it was at that time there was a conference happening for cocaine syndrome, and um, we walked into the lobby of a hotel there. And there were, you know, just regular children in the reception that we walked past. And then all of a sudden, a little child walked towards us. And it was just, whoa, you know, this child so looks like my daughter. And she just walked to Amy and Amy went straight to her and they put their arms around each other. And Amy just looked up at me and, um, you know, if you could have bottled that look, it was amazing. She just said to me, Mum, she looks like me, doesn't she? And it was the first time we'd ever seen anybody that did look like her. Amy, who is 18 has found love with fellow cocaine syndrome sufferer Nick. Despite having the Atlantic between them, the young couple are very much in love. Nick and Amy met on our very first trip over to see um, the doctor in Boston at the conference um, that was there. And um, very quickly, um, Nick spotted Amy. He'd gone out for some pizza and sort of some other bits and bobs of food. And as he walked past her, he did a bit of a double take and came straight over and sat next to her, pulled his sleeve up and showed her his muscles and she went bright red and uh, it just uh, was almost as if love hearts were popping out of his head as he was looking at her. He, he was really 
you know, animated the first time we saw her and she quickly felt the same way. And they look at each other, they just zone everybody else out and it's just like that. there's just them and nobody else in the world really. They're really happy to be together and they just can't wait to see each other. What do you and Nick like doing when you're together? Do you go to the cinema? We kiss. Lots and lots of kissing? Yeah. Is he good looking? Yeah? Yeah. He got very muscular. What do you like best about him? Is it his muscles? His face. His face? It's friendly. Makes you smile. Yeah. He is very sloppy. Sloppy? What do you mean by sloppy? He always wants to kiss her. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. It's a bad thing because then we never spend time with Nick and Amy. Because they're always... Um, not long after Nick met Amy, he was adamant he was going to marry her and he kept saying, will you marry me, Amy, will you marry me? So over the years of them seeing each other, um, he's asked her every time he's met her and in the end she said to him, okay, where's the ring? <laughs> Typical woman. At Disneyland Actually, Florida, he really su surprised Amy, didn't he? Yeah, because... He came in with the engagement ring and, and the roses. bunch of flowers. But, and we were all sitting in the room and every and all the um people like Ben and stuff, the photographer, all came in and then said we've got a big surprise for you and then there was a knock at the door and we opened it and Jenny and Nick came in and No Nick um, went Surprise Yeah and came in with his um glasses on and then gave him the roses and says, Will you marry me with the ring? After Amy and Nick's engagement Jane has set about organising her daughter's big day with the help of volunteers and donations. a wedding style blessing on the 4th of July this year um, we just feel as parents that if they did get married it, it would be too many implications really um, that you know she w wants to go and live with them and she can't she's becoming more ill and um, they couldn't look after each other and so it would mean that either you know Amy lived with Nick and his mum and dad or Nick lived with us and not as parents you know, we don't want to lose our children for them to go abroad and, you know, pass away with somebody else, really. And they need us. So um, we're planning that she gets to wear the dress that she wants to wear and she'll get her ring and Nick will wear his suit and they, they will be together as a couple, um, you know, in front of everybody as they want to be. What are you looking forward to about the wedding? Is it the party or is it getting married to Nick? Getting married. What's he wearing on the day? Has he got a suit? Yeah. And is he wearing, is it going to be pink? A pink tie. Pink tie. Does he know about what your dress is like or is it a surprise? Good fly. Isn't it more? Yeah. And do you know what you're going to do when you go and stay in Texas? Have you, what plans have you got? Well, I'm going to go here next year. I stay there for three weeks and I want to go to time I I think that um, it just seals their relationship for them, doesn't it? You know, whoever falls in love wants to get married and, you know, just because they've got this terrible illness shouldn't mean that they... they can at least have this blessing and um, I just think that Amy desperately wants to be joined with Nick and on him the same with Amy.